Get protected today at shieldmutual.com. Hi, everybody. George Donnelly here. Um, this is our eighth episode. I'm recording this um, July 16th, 2013. Today, I'd like to talk to you about the question of peace versus guns. Uh, and I'm going to start off with a quote from Ralph Waldo Emerson that I think is really, it, it really cuts to the heart of this. And here's the quote. Your actions speak so loudly, I cannot hear what you are saying. You know, so think about that. Uh, and I think the point, the important point here is that there has to be a con- congruency between what we say we want uh, as libertarians, as anarchists and whatnot, and what we actually do to get that which we want. So, um, you know, and I I think the core of what I want to say to you today is, if we're for peace, then we have to put away the guns. And if we keep the guns as part of our activism, then we have to stop sounding like hypocrites by talking about peace. Um, You cannot carry... Uh, a loaded rifle uh, and credibly talk to an unarmed person about um, peace and they, that's I mean, I mean come on I mean, this, this is basic well you know I didn't get it I, I have to say I didn't get it for a while but I, I think I'm getting it now um, you know I think we have to keep in mind that um, you know the way that people get across uh, messages is with marketing. Um, We have to persuade people, um, you know, not just with reason and and facts and everything, but, you know, we have to keep the emotional factor in mind as well, because almost all of us make decisions almost purely based on emotion uh, in the final analysis. Uh, You know, those of us who are afraid, you know, make our decisions about uh, war and the, you know, the surveillance state on that, you know, got to protect us at every cost. And uh, those of us who uh, feel uh, extremely uh, sad and disappointed when we see images of children killed by drone strikes, um, that, that moves us emotionally as well. Or when a friend is arrested, or when a small business is put out of business by uh, the IRS, or by a, uh, a land grab via eminent domain. Uh, so emotion, we, I think we have to recognize that emotion plays a role in uh, persuading people um, in marketing. Our job really here is to market libertarianism, to market liberty, to market uh, anarchism, whatever it is, however it is that you self-identify. Uh, we have to get people to understand it because... Um, if we don't, then um, they're not going to be on our side. Um, you know, we're not going to be able to be effective. Uh, it's just, you know, that's just the way it is. So, firearms, what do firearms say to people? First of all, a lot of people are scared of them. A lot of people associate them with war. Uh, for whatever reason, um, TV or whatever, a lot of people associate them with, with killing, with hurting people. And that's not an unreasonable association to make. What do we want to be associated with as libertarians, as anarchists, as activists, whatever? Uh, I don't know about you, but I'd like to be associated with peace, love, um, understanding, liberty, uh, reason, logic, calmness. Um, That's what I'd like to be associated with. And so if I am carrying a gun... Um, you know, a loaded weapon, uh, I don't think that you can honestly say that that is congruent with, say, with a message of peace. You know, as libertarians, we, we say we want to take, some, some of us say this, I, I don't say this, I don't, I don't like this, but some, some of us say we, we want to take over the government or we want to take over the country so we can just let everybody be, let, you know, let everybody do whatever they want, you know, be free. First of all, I... I'm, I mean, don't even get me started on that. But if you're going to say things like that while carrying a gun, um, that's not congruent. You know, it's like, hey, I want you to be free and have peace and not be a slave. Oh, but I have this gun here. Um, 
Because the fact is that um, that's just the associations that people make with guns. That is the climate that we are in now. Um, now, there have been some objections. There are some legitimate objections to what I'm saying here. For example, one person asked, am I advocating for unilateral disarmament on our part? No, no, that's not what I'm saying at all. I'm just saying stop flashing the AKs and the 1911s and, you know, strutting around, you know. And I, I'm guilty of this as well, you know. Um, you know, if, you, if, you, if your thing is calling for armed revolution, then you should definitely wrap yourself in guns. Um, that's your thing. Uh, but if your thing is peace, then the guns don't have a place there. They just confuse people. They, they, they muddle the message. Yeah? Um, you know, it's, it, and, and because of this kind of cognitive dissonance that's going on, it makes, you know, for me to be carrying a gun and to be saying I'm willing to use it even, even against uh, state agents or whatnot, uh, which, which I'm not, but uh, that to, to say, you know, I'm for peace and I'm willing to, I have this gun and I'm willing to use it, uh, that just makes you look like Stalin. I mean, come on, that's, that's the kind of double talk that people like Stalin engaged in that, um, you know, uh, we are working for peace, you know, but we must execute the, the people who are against us. I mean, come on. Um, you know, I'm not saying that you shouldn't keep and bear arms for self-defense. I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying it doesn't make sense to be holding up a peace symbol and a gun at the same time. It, 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 it's, it's, it's marketing fail, okay? It doesn't work. Uh, another objection, objection number two is um, that you may want your liberty first, yeah? Give me my liberty and then I'll stop flashing my AR-15, okay? Um, now this is uh, a little bit obtuse, okay? Uh, in order to achieve liberty, we have to get the people who grease the state's machinery to understand that we have something better to offer them. Uh, we can't do that if we're always talking about guns, for reasons I've already explained. So if you engage in political conversation, um, I mean, if you can't engage in a political conversation without bringing a gun into it, you're not going to achieve liberty. So it's kind of self-defeating, you know. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be holding up my gun here, you know, or carrying it on my side or whatever. Uh, until, you know, I, I get my liberty. Uh, okay, but uh, we need, I mean, we, we can't, as a small minority here, we can't do it alone. We have to get other people to understand us and like us and appreciate that we have something better to offer. And I'm telling you, we can't do it if we're always flashing guns around. Now, to say that we're flashing guns around is a little bit of an exaggeration. Um, but I'm using it for dramatic effect. Um, the third objection is, quote, there can be no peace between us and those that would enslave us. Now, this objection has also missed the point. Uh, first of all, it's not an, this is not an us versus them thing. I, I don't believe that, you know. For, that's too simplistic. And you know what? Um, that's an example of collectivist thought. Uh, that's saying that all of us on the side of liberty are a cohesive whole, which we're not. We're not. We're not at all. Uh, we all disagree uh, amongst ourselves on, ver on different things. Some of us can't even talk to each other. Uh, you know, traditional anarchists, uh, and I don't even think anarcho-capitalists are real anarchists, yeah? So, um, you know, really, I think that the truth is that we're just a bunch of individuals um, who are, you know, sharing this really cool spaceship um, that you can see a little piece of behind me here, as we travel through the cosmos, and that is even even that is just for a short time. Um, so if you really think it's impossible to make peace with oppressors, um, I really don't envy the choices that you have left to you, because for you you're at war. Um, I don't know what to tell you, but for as for me, I think anything is possible. And I think that a mutual understanding can be reached. I'm not saying it's easy. I'm not saying it'll be done overnight, but it, it can be done. It can absolutely be done. 
Um, objection number four, a gun is nothing special. Yeah? A gun is a tool like any other. There is nothing inherently violent or unpeaceful about a gun. Um, you know, I opened carried uh, for nine months in uh, the Philadelphia area in 2009, 2010. And so, um, you know, I'd really like to be able to agree with that. I'd really like to be able to say, yeah, a gun's just a tool. But, um, sorry, the purpose of a gun is to put a piece of metal into a living being. Be that an animal or, uh, you know, be that a human being or any other animal. Um, and when you put this piece of metal into them, it puts the, the being at great risk of, of harm and death. That's what a gun does. Um, it, you know, is it a tool? Sure, it's a tool. Uh, is it a tool for harmless ends? Sometimes, yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, I, by no means should anyone misconstrue what I'm saying. I'm not attacking the individual right to keep and bear arms. Uh, that is rock solid. I mean, that's unquestionable. Um, and it's undeniable that most people use uh, firearms for legitimate and peaceful self-defense purposes. That's undeniable. And it's also undeniable that uh, the fact that, you know, when a person is armed, when people are armed, it tends to increase safety, I think, because, um, you know, the people who would do, do us harm um, are, uh, you know, intimidated by that. So, um, but when some of you go around talking about that it's okay to, you know, when it's okay to kill cops, that defensive violence is justified against government agents, and that people who are part of the state's machinery are just subhuman sheeple, then you're creating the impression that you are willing to use your firearms against others to cause uh, them bodily harm. I mean, that's... that's I mean, for them, that's a threat. For them, that is, that is a credible threat of violence because they don't see it, the, of aggressive violence, because they don't see it the same way that we do. We have a difference in understanding here that has to be bridged, and we're not going to bridge it with a bullet. Um, so to say that a gun is a, just a tool like a fork or a wrench, frankly, I've become convinced that it is just cognitive dissonance if at the same time you talk about using guns to kill cops and sheeple. Guns are tools of violence. Now, it could be aggressive violence or defensive violence. That's decided by the individual who uses them. And how guns and, and other tools are used is, is um, you know, determines their use. I mean, how they're used by the individual determines their ultimate use. I mean, that, that's, a, that's another rock-solid point that's already been admitted. Each individual determines how the gun is used, you know. That pencils don't misspell words all by their own. Okay, now the, here's uh, the fifth objection, which I, I found a little bit um, ridiculous. Quote, no one pays attention if you are unarmed. So the point here is that um, unless, you know, you're carrying a gun while you're engaging in activism, that you're just going to be ignored. And I have to say, there's an implicit admission here that you want attention. Uh, speaking for myself, I don't want attention per se. I want to help myself and other people. Uh, any attention that is required for me to achieve that will flow naturally uh, when I have earned it, you know, when I've done something that is worthy of other people's attention. Um, but the statement, you know, that no one pays attention if you're unarmed is also, um, it's just plain untrue because there are plenty of stories in the news every day about uh, things going on, even activism and whatnot, that didn't require a firearm in order to get attention. And speaking from personal experience, um, in 2010, uh, when I was, um, you know, attacked by U.S. Marshals in Allentown, I got plenty of attention and support, even though there were no firearms involved, uh, even media attention. Uh, and in also later in 2010, when uh, Jim Babb and I uh, did the uh, We Won't Fly campaign, uh, to restore dignity, um, some measure of dignity to uh, air travelers at airport checkpoints, there were no guns involved. And I have to say that was insanely, ins insanely successful. Um, more than a million views on YouTube, um, more than, a, you know, hundreds of thousands of, of web page, website visits, 
uh, donations, and not to mention three weeks straight of mainstream media attention, including uh, Jim even getting on national media like CNN. So, um, and not to mention the effectiveness, because we shut down uh, TSA scoping and groping for a whole weekend. So, um, on that point, I beg to differ. Yeah. So, uh, objection number six is, quote, are, are we saying, are you saying, that we should change our message to conform to the sheeple? The, his words, not mine. I don't like that word. Um, yeah, I am. I am. Um, I'm saying we must tailor our marketing to the market. We have a message and there is a market out there. Um, you know, that's, that's just marketing 101. If the market wants to buy tuna, I don't push canned spam on them um, and expect them to thank me for it. The message, you know, the principles of liberty are subject to debate, discussion, examination, all that. But um, the marketing message has to be revised constantly because um, the market for liberty out there is constantly in flux. I mean, come on, that's basic. Yeah? So objection number seven. Uh, quote, if the price of peace is slavery, I'll take violence any day. Well, um, you know, that, that is a false dichotomy. That's saying that either we are slaves or we must use violence to free ourselves. And uh, frankly, I have to say that violence is, is uh, in my humble opinion, just another form of slavery. Because hey, when I use violence against uh, someone else, uh, I'm the first person. I mean, I have to hurt myself first before I can really do that. I have to hurt myself internally. This is not easy to understand, and you may very well disagree with this. Um, you may or may not come to understand it uh, the same way that I do. So be it. But uh, it is a false dichotomy to say that either uh, we are slaves or we must go out there and fight uh, with rifles and bombs and the whole thing. Uh, there is a third way, and it's been well proven uh, by the likes of Jesus, Gandhi, Martin Luther King, um, and, and so many others. There is a third way, and it's called nonviolence. Um, so let's work on that third way, you know? Um, and I would say that the price of peace is actually reason, patience, diligence, and determination. Um, that, that's just, that's the price of peace. That's the price of liberty, too. That's really the price of almost about anything that, um, that anybody wants. So, uh, again, just to sum up, you know, if we want uh, peace, set aside the guns. Um, you know, just don't, you know, don't, don't use them so much in the activism, because I think you're self-defeating. Um, and if you want um, um, to have an armed revolution, to have a war, a shooting war, then, then stop talking about peace because you're making it harder for us who, who are um, more congruent, who are, whose actions are more congruent with the, the goal of peace. You're making it harder for us um, to be effective for peace. So. Um, Hope you enjoyed this video and uh, you can leave a comment below if you like, either on my blog or on uh, YouTube. Um, uh, let's see, if you're listening to this on the podcast, you can go to aymfl.com slash podcast uh, to leave a comment there or find the, ar the article for this on there. Uh, please give me a call. Here's the number. Uh, you can call this number. It's a voicemail box. Uh, leave a message with your question for me. Um, I'm, 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 I'm only interested in questions via this line. Yeah? If you want to disagree with me, I'd appreciate um, you know, a comment. Uh, if you think it's worth your time to interact with me, a comment, um, as I already mentioned, or maybe even a video. Discussion is good. You know, I like it when people disagree with me. I really like it because I like a good challenge. But uh, I don't like it when people engage in personal attacks. I'm just, you know, the first personal attack and I'm, I'm out of there. Yeah, I'm, I'm just not gonna give you my attention. So um, yeah, just thanks for listening um, and have a, a beautiful and peaceful day.
Get protected today at shieldmutual.com. 